Our last influence on noir is that of the modern female gothic. They generally surround a young, beautiful woman trapped in a stately manner with the ghost of her love rival and the seemingly manic husband whose past is coming up to snap her mind in two. They are as dark and moody as any horror film, but without the hard-boiled masculinity found in noir. Films like Gaslight, The Spiral Staircase, Secret Beyond the Door, but today we go into Rebecca. To all you out-of-work soda jerks without a penny to pinch, to the detectives with all the answers, to the dastardly dames who play men like baby dolls, and the trusted ones too pure for this world, and all you double-crossing, backstabbing, ruthless, baby-faced amateurs, this one's for you. So suit up, turn out the lights, put the match to your smokes, and sit back for the darker side of things. Sin a shadow moonlights. Noir Vimper. Directed by Alfred Hitchcock and produced by David O. Selznick, the plot of Rebecca surrounds the future Mrs. DeWinter meeting Max DeWinter while out on holiday. We're first introduced to Max DeWinter as we see him contemplating suicide, staring longingly at the sea on top of a cliff. After she yells out to him, he breaks that train of thought. He stares at her lovingly. We find out that she's got some problems of her own too. On holiday, simply under the employ of Mrs. Van Hopper, she's very unsure of herself. And Mrs. Van Hopper's always telling her what to do. She's a very naive girl, never really doing anything on her own. While cavorting with Max, she's very paranoid about his reasons why he's hanging out with her. She believes it's due to some type of charity or something, but he actually does find her attractive and likes her. This continues throughout the movie, as she's very clumsy and really not up to snuff. Her parents are dead, she has no one else, and she's very sensitive. When Mrs. Hopper has to leave quickly to go plan the wedding of her own daughter, the future Mrs. DeWinter gets a little nervous and goes to see Max after not having a proper goodbye. She has fallen quickly in love with him, and he eventually proposes marriage to her. There's a very charming scene when Max asks the future Mrs. DeWinter if they want to be married, and he's talking about their wedding. That should be a classy wedding. And he says, It should be in a conservatory. You in a white frock with red rose in your hand and a violin playing in the distance. And I should be making violent love to you behind a palm tree. It's very funny and reminds me of the comedy in my own marriage. Max calls Mrs. Van Hopper up to his room to explain to her the situation. She puts further doubt into the mind of the future Mrs. DeWinter, adding to her paranoia. They are ready to go to Manderley now. This is where things really start to take off. The drive leading up to Manderley is long and winding, untouched and overgrown. This adds to the claustrophobic nature of the film. As we first see the manor, it's big and looming, seeming to hold a ghost that will haunt Mrs. DeWinter forever. As she enters the house, we see the help. She doesn't know how to act towards them. She doesn't know how to lead them. And then we're introduced to Mrs. Danvers. She starts to take on the identity of Rebecca, thinking that's what Max wants. He gets mad at her one day as she chases a dog down to a cabin that holds a lot of Rebecca's old possessions. There seems to be something about Rebecca's death that we're unsure of, and it continues to haunt Max. Her desperation and uneasiness continues as Max gets more fraught with her. While away on business, we meet one of Rebecca's cousins, who advances sexually towards the new Mrs. DeWinter. We get a feeling that there was something between him and Rebecca while she was still alive. Something sexual. Yeah, she might have been screwing her cousin. Later, when the new Mrs. DeWinters finally discovers Rebecca's old room, we see that it is immaculate and pristine as it was when Rebecca was alive. This has been upkept by Mrs. Danvers, 
who we realize has a deep love and affection for Rebecca. Sensually touching her clothing by rubbing it on her face and even noticing that a hairbrush has been slightly moved from its original position. We notice the lesbian subtext here, especially when she touches her lingerie that is lying on the bed. This forces the new Mrs. DeWinter to overcome and finally state, I am Mrs. DeWinter now. She starts dressing differently and has a newfound affection for her husband. Things are finally changing. There's a party later that evening, and Mrs. Danvers suggests that she recreate a dress from a portrait found in the hallway. This makes Max very angry, as it was the dress that Rebecca was wearing a year ago. Mrs. DeWinter runs from the party upstairs, where Mrs. Danvers talks down to her for trying to be like Rebecca. They look out the window together, and she suggests to her that she should jump out the window. Don't be afraid. There, an explosion happens. Divers go down to search the wreckage, and Rebecca's old boat is found instead. The past is coming back. Rebecca's body is also found in the wreckage, and Max starts to unravel the mystery to Mrs. DeWinter. All will soon be revealed. But I'll save that for the uninitiated. Go watch the film. There's also some somewhat surreal images in this film, like the opening where we see the camera move through the drive up to Manderley. It's almost like a dream. There's also a scene when Mrs. DeWinter is turning in her sleep, and you hear Mrs. Van Hopper's voice talking over and over about Rebecca's death, foreshadowing the haunting nature that Rebecca's ghost will have over Mrs. DeWinter. Overall, it's a pretty good film. It did win Best Picture, but in my opinion, it's got a little bit too much Selznick in it than Hitchcock, although Hitchcock did try his best to keep Selznick's greedy little hands off the editing. It doesn't have that urgent, in-your-face suspense that Hitchcock later showed in his career. It's got a little bit too much Gone with the Wind flash. And as far as its links to noir, well, it's kind of like a noir, but from the woman's point of view. The woman is after comfort, a sense of belonging, love, whereas a man would be after the control of the situation, trying to figure out all the angles, trying not to die. Rebecca is definitely the film fatale of this movie, in ghost form, 